What happened at the reverie? What's the government trying to hide from the world? Who was the death? Who committed an attempted murder? who they try to murder? And why'd they try to murder them? What was the prize that Blackbeard was going to claim? What was the leaked intel that Wobble had? Why is everyone's reaction to Sabo sad and shocking? Why was Eam staring at a picture of Vivi? And what happened to her after the reverie? What if I told you that I dove deep into every one of those questions, rereading the reverie over and over, rereading each translation, and came to a conclusion? After rereading it many times, I finally came to a conclusion that ties all the pieces together and that makes perfect sense. I believe I found a logical answer to each one of the questions and I also found possible foreshadowing from all the way back to Whiskey Peak. If you want to learn what happened to Vivi, Sabo, King Cobra and others, then stay tuned because today we're going to be diving deep into One Piece's biggest mysteries. Remember to like and subscribe if you're a true One Piece fan and now let's get into it. In chapter 956, we clearly see that Shirahoshi and King Neptune are clearless about what happened to the Alabasta Royals. They seem very calm talking to Garp about what took place. King Neptune says that the meeting got intense, especially since there's years of history built up between countries. Everything seems to be normal until Garp brings something up that they haven't heard about. He tells them that the Navy is using its full resources to solve a matter that is regarding the Kingdom of Alabasta. What happened with Alabasta? Since we see that the Navy is trying to fix a problem of the whole nation, that indicates that possibly the royal lineage of Alabasta has dispersed. How could a whole kingdom be in trouble if they only lose their king? If the king died, wouldn't that make Vivi the next incoming leader of the kingdom? Well, if something terrible truly happened to Alabasta, then that means that something would have had to happen to both Vivi and King Cobra. I'll explain more about what I believe happened to the both of them and how it was foreshadowed since the first time we meet Vivi. Another very interesting thing about this scene at Fishman Island is when Garp says how at the reverie, this as long as no blood is spilled, he's willing to call it peace, and that this meeting was a bad one. Notice how he says this right before he tells them about an incident with Alabasta. Is Garp indicating that the reverie meeting was peaceful on the outside, yet on the inside leading to the downfall of the world that they know? Is he also indicating that after the reverie blood was shed, since he's not willing to call what happened peaceful, maybe he's foreshadowing that a war is coming. Later on in the chapter, we see Morgan say that there's been a death and an attempted murder. Another thing we see is a picture of Sabo on the wall. This is interesting since right after this, Dragon and the revolutionaries are freaking out. Oda also shows us that Makino closed her bar due to her being very sad, and also died on crying. Another important thing to lay out before I get into my theory is that Wapo has leaked intel for the Morgans. This will tie everything together with Vivi and Alabasta and you'll see why later on. The last important detail that's tied with everything in this chapter is Blackbeard saying how he's going to claim the prize that the government's going after. This is also tied with everything that happened at the reverie and what took place there is the motives for Blackbeard. Okay, so now that you understand the context of my theory of Vivi and Sabo faking their debts, let's talk about what really went down at the reverie. It seems pretty clear that King Cobra and King Riku really pushed the narrative of abolishing the warlord system. Fujitora and the two kings were able to convince a majority of the vote that warlords are still pirates and should not be allied with the world government. With this being said, this is what was most likely on one side of the newspapers. Remember that Morgan said that since the events that took place are so insane, there will be two covers, one on the front and one on the back. What was on the front seems to be pretty obvious, but the back side of the newspaper is where only clues can truly expose what was written. The most important clue would be in chapter 823. The king of Alabasta, Nefertari Cobra, says how he wants to learn what the Nefertari family of the past did to the world. He basically wanted to know something about the Void Century. He's wanted to know this ever since meeting Nico Robin and realized that she's not a bad person. He wants to learn about the history of Alabasta and about its polyglyph. We also see that the king is sick or coming close to his end. I believe he's probably ready to die for the truth and for the country of Alabasta. He probably thought that he may die at the reverie and was even ready for it, but didn't expect that they would do something to Vivi as well. In chapter 900 as the reverie begins, we see the Gorse walking to meet with someone named Grey Emu. As they are walking, they discuss how King Cobra desires a meeting with them. They wonder if he's caught on to something of ancient history and it seems like he has. Cobra at least wonders about what his ancestors did and why they left the 20 royal families of celestial dragons. He also wonders why reading a polyglyph is illegal and known to be the biggest crime in the whole world.
While Eam is walking up to her throne, and while she looks down at them, she is holding Vivi's wanted poster. The light she wants to extinguish this time is the Nefotari family. Not only does she know that Vivi has ties to the Straw Hats, but she also knows that King Cobra wishes to discuss with the five elders about his ancestors and about the Pawnee groups. So yes, the light that will be erased from history this time is the Nefotari family. They are simply too dangerous to keep around. The world government was demanded to kill them after the reverie ended, and although they think they got Vivi, she somehow escaped. Sabo plays a big role with this escape, and he's the next person I want to explain. So Sabo went to marry Joyce with other revolutionaries to declare war on the world government. As they are doing this, they see poor Bart being treated like an animal by Saint Rossward. Sabo can't control himself, and another revolutionary even says that they're not going to leave Kuma. By the reactions of the revolutionaries and of people who knew Sabo, it seems like the plan was a failure. The world thinks that Sabo, Cobra, and Vivi are dead, and here's what I think happened. At the end of the reverie, King Cobra got his talk with the Gorsei. The Gorsei decided to meet with him just to make sure what his intentions were and what he wanted to speak about. He most likely asked them about the Void Sentry, why his people left the Celestial Dragons, and why Poneglyphs are illegal to read if they show you the history of a blank century. What's there to hide from the world? The Gorsei decided to meet with him just to make sure what his intentions were and what he wanted to speak about, and may have realized that it has something to do with what happened with the Straw Hats and Nico Robin. After this, they had no mercy on him and may have killed him or at least hired someone to kill him for them. This is probably what the world government wanted Morgans to keep out of the newspaper. Another interesting point to lay out of the king being the death that Morgans was talking about has to do with the arc Amazon Lily. In Amazon Lily, when Luffy is about to fight Boa's sisters, they come out to show us their zone forms for the first time. Marigold has a snake form that's called King Cobra, kind of like King Cobra of Alabasta? Now the interesting thing here is that as she turned into this and as Oda shows us that her zone form is a King Cobra, the Amazon warriors are chanting the word death. Maybe this is foreshadowing that King Cobra is the death at the reverie or will die by the end of the series. On top of this, they realized that they couldn't allow the Kingdom of Alabasta to remain under the Nefotari name, so their next victim was Vivi. This is where things get really interesting. At the same time that they are targeting the Nefotari family and people of Alabasta, Sabo and the revolutionaries show up. Things don't go as planned for the revolutionaries and their goal is still to declare war on the world government, but they are also trying to save their friend Bart. The newspaper labels the revolutionaries as an assassination attempt. They probably got word that the revolutionaries came to kill a world noble or to assassin someone. While the revolutionaries are trying to save Kuma, the Nefotari family is the last remaining family at Mary Joyce. Vivi and the other people of Alabasta notice Sabo as Luffy's brother and then they try to help them, specifically Vivi. Of course, they have no respect for the world nobles after what they saw with Shirahoshi earlier that week. As they are helping Sabo or at least talking to him, Vivi somehow gets close to Sabo and the revolutionaries. Now I'm not sure if she already knows about her dad being killed yet or not, but if she does then that's even another reason for the people of Alabasta to help the revolutionaries and fight the world government on the spot. As this is happening, the five elders may demand someone to kill Vivi. Someone throws or shoots a bomb off at Vivi and Sabo as they are trying to free Bart. As the bomb explodes, it seems that Vivi and Sabo die. Although the navy did mean to kill her, it looks as if she got caught up in the crossfire since she was right next to Sabo. Okay, so now you may ask, why do I think that Vivi and Sabo supposedly went missing from an explosion? Like an explosion is so specific. Well, I believe that because it may have been foreshadowed on three different occasions dating all the way back to Whiskey Peak. In Whiskey Peak, we see Ikerdem fake his death by blowing up on a ship. Ikerdem is a part of Alabasta and he faked his death by exploding, so maybe this will foreshadow Vivi doing it as well. The next time we see someone connected with Vivi and Sabo blow up is Pell. Everyone thought that Pell died, but just like Ikerdem, he somehow also survived. Now I'm not here to tell you if the will of P is a plot hole or not, I'm just saying that this is twice now that someone from Alabasta survived an explosion. The next hint of Sabo and Vivi faking their death through an explosion is when Sabo himself does that in Ace's flashback. Sabo's small boat was fired at by celestial dragons and everyone that knew him thought that he was dead. <laughs> Sabo 
somehow Dragon ended up saving him last minute, but for the most part he faked his death as well. So two people from Alabasta and Sawa himself faking their deaths through explosions led me to the idea that that's how they faked their death at Mary Joyce. Now you may wonder, well if an explosion did seem to hit them, how would they even survive that? Not only survive, but how would they escape from the sights of Admiral Greenbull and other marines? Well, they escaped by Bart. Yes, as they were trying to save Bartholomew, he sent them both off flying to the place that would best suit them right before the impact of the bomb. I think this is the only realistic possibility because if they were going to fake their death in another way, don't you think that one of the admirals would have been able to sense them escaping? For example, we know that Morley has a devil fruit power that allows her to go underground to hide. If she hid Sabo and Vivi underground as the bomb exploded, I would assume that either Fuji or Green Bull would have noticed that they didn't die. With Bart's devil fruit power, they instantly escape and it seems to the people around them that they actually did die. I can see a situation where a world noble, maybe even St. Rossward, commanding Bart to fight Sabo and telling him to make them disappear. Since Bart is now a slave that obeys the celestial dragons, maybe he obeys St. Rossward's command, but ironically he actually helps Vivi and Sabo. By making them escape or by fighting back, he uses his powers to send them off to other islands instead of killing them. Maybe the newspaper labels them as missing or allegedly dead since they disappeared. A part of Kuma's power is that he can send people off flying to the island that they need to go to the most. So where do Vivi and Sabo need to go the most? Well, for Vivi, I would think Wano. I believe she will be the next and last official member of the Straw Hat Pirates. Since Vivi is considered dead or missing until her body is found, she probably even has a dead or alive bounty poster. It seems like the world government is currently trying to take over Alabasta. Not only this, but it also seems as if Blackbeard is going to take over it as well. Shout out for Evil for coming up with this and I do recommend checking out his theory on why Blackbeard is going to take Alabasta. In chapter 956, after the newspapers get released to the public, we see Blackbeard say, if the navy is going to take it, then I might as well claim the prize. What would the navy be taking? Wouldn't it only make sense they go to take over Alabasta, since King Cobra may have just died and Vivi gone missing, and also since it has valuable resources like an ancient weapon. We also see Garp say that the navy is using its full resources to solve the matter which involves the kingdom of Alabasta. Full resources means that they're sending ships over to the island and going to take it over. The world probably views this as a good thing but we the readers know about the government cover-ups. So if the navy is going to take Alabasta, then that means that Blackbeard is going to try to claim the land and ancient weapon for himself. So now you see why Vivi joining the Straw Hats makes perfect sense right now. She doesn't have any place to go home to, or wait, does she actually? Her home from here on out in the story is the Thousand Sunny. The Thousand Sunny is her home and the Straw Hats are her family. I also think Vivi being sent off by Bart is somewhat of an initiation for her joining the pirate crew. Every other pre-timeskip Straw Hat was sent off by him at their lowest point. The same thing may have happened to Vivi. Each straw hat had to meet back up after being sent off by Bart, so maybe the same thing will happen to her. Vivi won't even be forced to go back to save her country since it might be in good hands. I know what you may be thinking, how is it in good hands if either the Navy or Blackbeard took it over? Well, just hear me out on this and you'll see why. Something that I can see happening with Alabasta is that the king may have told someone that he trusts where Pluton is and what it is. He may have known that this would be his last trip and that the world government would have tried to attack him and Alabasta after it. The only true friend of the king that didn't go to the trip of the reverie was Koza. Koza is probably the most loyal citizen of Alabasta and honestly could have even become the king someday. Who knows, maybe he is the new king right now. I mean, Vivi does refer to him as leader, hinting that he could become the leader of the country one day. In my opinion, he is fit to be a leader of the country because he truly does love Alabasta and its people. He's willing to do whatever it takes to defend them and to help them. Although he was tricked by Croc before, now he is more loyal to the king and kingdom than ever. The king most likely told him the location of Pluton just in case things went messy at the reverie which it seems they did. Another hint to Koza becoming the future leader of the country is in the flashback when he saves Vivi's life as a child. After he saves her, the king of Alabasta tells him how the next generation of their country is dependable because of him. The king also asks him if he loves his country and Koza shows him that his love is similar to the king's. The next page or panel after this, we see the king telling Eagerdom that he fears that Vivi is too nice to be the next ruler of the country. This is interesting because it almost seems like he's thinking of Koza being the next possible ruler instead of Vivi. I mean, 
we do know that Koza is willing to lay down tough decisions after he started a revolution. This may actually happen knowing that something tragic took place at the reverie. So who knows Blackbeard and the world government may not even end up with Alabasta itself. Therefore Vivi can join the Straw Hats freely without having to go back to save her country as she did before. Now for where Bart sent Sabo, I have multiple places in mind that he could have been sent. Wano has direct parallels with Ace and maybe Sabo shows up in Wano in a way that Ace did. Although I do think Luffy will defeat Kaido. Another possible location would be the revolutionary base, Memorial Island. We see Dragon say that they can't assume anything is true yet, which shows that maybe it says Sabo died but his body wasn't found. Sabo may drop down from the sky and tell them the whole story. The last location I think Bar could have sent him off is Alabasta. The reason for this would be because, yet again, it's somewhat a parallel with Ace. Alabasta is where Luffy first sees Ace since becoming a pirate. Although, if Blackbeard is going to Alabasta, then that would also be a parallel with Ace. Ace lost to Blackbeard in a fight before a huge war started, so maybe Sabo will win against the Blackbeard pirates before a huge war starts. This would be with the help of Pluton and the Alabasta army. Now I'm not fully sure on which place Sabo went, but I think there's a chance for any of them. Who knows, maybe Bart even sent him off somewhere else which better fits the story. Now that you've heard what I believe happened at the Reverie, there's still one more thing to discuss. That would be, what was the leaked intel that Wapo had? Well, the leaked intel would be that Vivi was a former Straw Hat, or at least was allied with the Straw Hat crew, whose captain is currently Joy Boy. Think about it, the government covered up the fact that the Straw Hats defeated Baroque Works and that Luffy saved Alabasta. Not many even know that Vivi is friends with them and was even once on their crew. The reason Wapo would finally leak this is because of the huge news that just dropped. He doesn't like Vivi and wants to do anything he can to put dirt on her name. Her being allied with the Straw Hats makes her look like a criminal herself from a One Piece world view. Even though the world thinks she and the king are dead, they probably don't even feel bad since they seem to be criminals or at least friends with one of the most wanted crews in the seas. Some kings and nations are probably even becoming enemies with Alabasta because of this. WAP will probably also leak this intel for a load of cash, which sounds like something he'd do. So answering all the questions from the beginning of the video, what was the government trying to hide from the world? They were trying to hide the fact that they killed King Cobra and it wasn't accidental. Who was the death that Morgan's brought up? The death was King Cobra as he may have been killed in plain sight. Although it seems that both Vivi and Sabo may also be labeled as dead or something along those lines. I believe the newspaper also says that they're actually missing because they couldn't find their bodies after the explosion. It seemed like they died but there's technically no evidence of their bodies being found. Who committed an attempted murder? Who'd they try to murder? And why'd they try to murder them? Sabo committed an attempted murder. He tried to kill Saint Rossward and he wanted to kill him because he rode on top of Bartholomew and treated him like an animal. Although Sabo didn't go to the reverie to murder a celestial dragon since he went there to declare war on the world government. It sure looked as if he attempted murder in the eyes of most witnesses. He probably raged and couldn't take seeing Bart treated that way. What was the prize that Blackbeard was gonna claim? The prize is Alabasta. What was the leaked intel that Wapu had? The leaked intel would be that Vivi is both friends and was once part of the Straw Hat crew. Why is everyone's reaction to Sabo sad and shocking? Because they might think he died even though he actually escaped through his friend Bart. How would Vivi survive after it seemed Eam wanted to extinguish her light? She may have also been sent off by Bart to the Straw Hats. What do you think about this theory? Let me know anything down in the comments and please help a guy out and like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and remember to have a great day.